All right, this video is meant to be an overview of pressure conversions and the gas laws that you learned uh, when you took chemistry. All right, here are some basic properties of gases that will help us when we're talking about the gas laws, kind of understand what's going on and why. Um, one, whatever container they are in, they fill it uniformly as much space as they can give themselves. Um, it can, gases can be easily compressed, and if you mix two gases, they mix completely. All right, here are some of the variables we're gonna see when we do these calculations. So the first is pressure, which the equation for pressure is force divided by area, but really the way we need to think about it is how frequent are the gas particles colliding with each other and the sides of the container, and how hard or aggressive are the particles colliding with the sides of the container. Um, Volume is the size of the container, so that's how much space the gas has to occupy. Um, moles is the number of particles, and then temperature is um, the average kinetic energy. So the faster that the gas is moving, the higher the temperature. That means it's got a higher average kinetic energy. One specific thing that we could look at or to tie into kind of some real world problems are the pressure of the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure. Um, basically what we're looking at is the pressure of the an air mass as it's kind of pulled towards earth um, the atmospheric pressure can change due to weather um, so the different weather conditions but also based off altitude so you may have um, said to someone who's visiting you in colorado or heard someone say that the air is thinner here in colorado what that really means is that there's less gas particles Okay, so we have less oxygen, or they'll say it's hard to breathe because there's less oxygen. So because we have less particles, less moles, that's going to result in less collisions, which results in the lower pressure here in Colorado. So here we got Mount Everest, um, a much lower pressure due to at sea level, we might have a much higher pressure. Um, so the air is thinner, which results in a lower pressure here in Colorado. All right, here's two devices that are used to measure pressure. So the first one I wanna talk about is a barometer, and this is what's used commonly like at the weather station, sometimes they're at high schools or colleges, um, to measure the pressure in the atmosphere. So basically, we have a plate filled with mercury or some other substance similar to mercury um, and a tube. As the pressure in the atmosphere pushes down on this surface area, it causes the mercury to rise up the tube. We can measure then how high the mercury is. Um, the more it rises, the, the higher the pressure. The other device that's used sometimes is called a manometer. So we have um, a gas of some sort um, that we're trying to figure out the pressure. Sometimes it's in a closed container, sometimes it's open to the atmosphere, but either way we are comparing essentially two glasses or two gases um, and we compare the levels of the mercury in this tube okay so if they're equal it means this gas has the same pressure as this gas okay as one of the gases pushes down harder we say it's kind of winning here right so we can measure the difference to figure out um, what the maybe unknown gas pressure is all right, we are gonna look at how to convert from one unit of pressure to the other. Before I do that though, I wanna talk about what standard pressure is. So STP stands for standard temperature and pressure, which is basically a chemist way. We can say we're at STP and it's our way of getting out of listing the actual temperature and the actual pressure. Um, but let's talk about what standard pressure is. We'll get to temperature later. Um, standard pressure is the air pressure at sea level. So all of these values, one ATM, 760 mmHg, 760 torr, 101.325 pascals, 29.92 inches of Hg, inches of mercury, and 14.7 pounds per square inch. Those are all pressures at sea level. Those are all equal, just different units. So any of those are considered standard pressure. When we convert from one pressure unit to the other, we're gonna take what's given in the problem, okay, and that's gonna have some sort of unit, and we're gonna multiply it by this conversion factor. So we're gonna put the given unit on bottom. So let's say that we're going from 2.3 torr and I want to get my answer into INHG. So this was given in the problem, I have 2.3 torr, and we are gonna use these conversion factors here. Oops, not that one, don't care about that one. This guy here, and then the torr right here in our conversion factor here. 
So who goes on top? Well, we want the new unit that we want on top. So that's the 29.92 inches of HG on top. And the unit we're trying to get rid of or the one that's given goes on bottom, 760 tor. So we're really just multiplying this fraction by something that's e or this given unit by something that's equal here. This guy is equal to each other, um, but that allows us to switch between units because when we multiply, this guy by the fraction, our, our units are going to change to tor times INHG divided by tor when we multiply by that fraction. And what happens to tor? It goes away, and we're left with inches of it, um, mercury. Okay, I'm not going to solve that one out. I'm just showing you some setup. All right, I'm going to do the first problem here, and then I want you to try um, B, C, and D and check your answers um, using the conversion, those equalities on the previous page. So um, we want to go from, well, we have Freon, um, which is in air conditioners, and it is at a pressure of 4.8 atmosphere. So this is our initial pressure. So I'm going to start with what's given, 4.8 atmospheres, and I'm going to multiply it by a fraction. I want to get rid of atmosphere. So if you look back at the previous slide, um, one atmosphere is equal to 760 mmHg, or millimeters of mercury. Okay, so I'm going to take in my calculator 4.8 times 760 and then divide that answer by 1. That way my units cancel, ATM atmospheres goes away, and I'm left with my final answer of 30, or 3,648 mmHg. And since APs come in, I'll go sig figs. We started with two sig figs, so I'm going to end with 3,600 mmHg. Okay, these guys don't count for sig figs. They are... Um, because it's a conversion factor, we say that these have an infinite number of sig figs. So really, you're just looking out in front and matching for sig figs. So you try B, C, and D. I'll put up the answers and see how we do. All right, hopefully you can see those answers. Um, Tor has the same conversion factor, so you get the same answer as letter A. And then we use the conversion. Oops. Um, we're going to use the conversion for C um, between atmospheres and pascals. And then the last one I gave you... Um, the conversion up here one atmosphere is 14.7 psi psi stands for pound per square inch um this is actually the unit that's used in your tire pressure gauge so usually our tires we want to be around the 32 psi pound per square inch so almost double for this one the pressure in our tire to oops we are going to look at all of the gas laws that you learned in your regular chem class, but before we do that, it's important to know the relationships because you have to be able to see if your answer makes sense. Um, so let's talk through these really quick. Um, so first, I want to do the relationship between pressure and volume. So let's think. If I decrease the size of my container, if I make it smaller, so let's picture the gas particles are um, high schoolers at prom. If we have the prom in our commons area um, versus the prom in my classroom, okay, that's making the area, the space that the kids have to dance a lot smaller if we go from the commons to my classroom. Okay, what is that going to do to the pressure, to the number of collisions between kids? Well, the kids are going to have to really bump and grind and get real close to each other. I mean, I guess that happens anyways in the comments, but you go see what I'm going with, right? They're going to run into each other more. They're going to run into the containers more. They're going to have to dance a lot closer. Pressure is the amount of collisions, so the pressure is going to go up. So pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. When one goes up, the other goes down, okay? Let's look at temperature and volume. Remember, temperature is the speed of the particles. So if I heat up the particles, that means they are moving a lot faster. So picture um, kids maybe running around in my classroom, right? If I, actually let's put them in a, like a bounce house, okay? Little kids in a bounce house, okay? If I have some little kids, five little kids in a bounce house, and they're moving really slow, like slow motion, okay? Our bounce house isn't gonna really do much, right? It's gonna stay the same shape. But if I make those kids heat up or move faster, they're gonna start, guys, they're going to start to push on the sides. Here's my little bounce house. They're going to start to push, and we know bounce houses are flexible, right? So those kids hit the sides, and your bounce house is going to start to get bigger. Okay, so as long as volume can change, and it's not like a glass container or something like that, your volume will get bigger. So something like a balloon, a bounce house, things like that are going to start to expand as these kids start to push on the sides of the container. So this is a direct relationship. 
okay? How about uh, temperature and pressure? If I heat up those kids, and let's say that the volume is gonna be constant here, so we're not in a bounce house, we're in something that can't be changed like a flask. If I make these gas particles move faster and faster and faster, they are gonna collide more often, right? Picture kids running now in my classroom versus slowly walking, right? They're gonna run into each other way more, so our pressure, our number of collisions is gonna go up. So this is also a direct relationship. And lastly, N, remember, is moles. So if I start um, at the prom and there are 100 kids there, but then I amp up the number of kids and make it 1,000 kids at prom, so we increase the number of particles, the number of gas particles, that's going to cause more collisions, more bumping and grinding, right? More kids will dance if there are 1,000 kids at the prom than if there are only 100 kids. So this is also a direct relationship. All right, these equations might look familiar. Um, I think you'll have an easier time this year with them, but Boyle's Law, um, again, you don't really need to know the names of these equations. You just need to know how to use them, but Boyle's Law looks at the inverse or the indirect relationship between pressure and volume. So the initial pressure, the initial volume, and then we're going to change one of them and see how it impacts. Avogadro's Law looks at the volume and the number of moles. Charles Law looks at volume and temperature. Gay-Lussac's Law looks at pressure and temperature. And then um, the combined gas law kind of looks at all three of those main variables together. Notice we have all of these are our direct relationships, our indirect relationship is this guy, and then we kind of have a combo happening with the combined gas law. All right, so this is Boyle's law, which means we're going to look at the pressure and volume. One of them is changing and we want to see the impact. So real quick as a refresher, Boyle's law is pressure one times volume one equals pressure two times volume two. Okay, I always like to list the variables because word problems um, stress me out a little bit. So let's look at this. We got a balloon um, and it can be inflated to a volume no more than two liters of helium, excuse me, um, volume of no more than 2.5 liters, um, and the balloon is filled with two liters of helium at sea level, so that's our starting volume, is the 2.0 liters, and it's at sea level, which means we're at standard pressure, right? Sea level is standard pressure, so that's one atmosphere or really any of those conversions. Um, it rises to an altitude, which the atmosphere pressure, so they're giving me a new pressure when it goes into the air, is 500 mmHg. Well, right away I see we have a little issue because my units don't match, but I'm gonna change my pressure one. Instead of doing a full-on conversion, I know that one atmosphere is equal to 760 mmHg. So instead of converting this guy into atmospheres, I'm just gonna change based off the definition of one ATM equals 760. Okay, um, will the balloon burst? So I'm really looking for volume two, and I want to compare it to this 2.5, right? It'll burst if we get bigger than 2.5. So I can set up my equation. Actually, let's do a little prediction first. So based off Boyle's law, I'm looking at pressure is going from 760 to 500. So pressure is going down. What do I expect my volume to do? Well, I expect volume to go up because Boyle's law is inverse. So we, it's going to get bigger. The real question is, is it going to get bigger than 2.5 liters? Because that's the bursting point. So let's plug in some numbers. I'm going to take my P1, 760, times my V1, 2.0, equals V2, what we're looking for, times 500 mmHg. Okay, so in my calculator, I'm take 760 times 2, and that's going to be equal to V2. So I got to divide both sides by the 500 to get V2 all by itself. And I plugged into my calculator already. Don't worry, guys, I got this. And I got... um. 3.04 liters okay so this balloon can handle only 2.5 liters so that is greater than 2.5 liters so yes the balloon will burst which is not good for these manufacturers all right um so let's talk about temperature before we get into charles law um first of all temperature has to be in kelvin not an option has to be in kelvin no celsius no fahrenheit when we're doing gas laws Okay, why does it have to be in Kelvin? Well, Kelvin, the lowest possible temperature is zero. So you, can, you won't ever have negative. And if you look at those simple algebra equations we're using, um, you can't have a negative temperature on one side because that could potentially pr produce like a negative volume, which doesn't exist, or a negative number of moles. 
So we need a temperature unit or a scale that doesn't go negative, and that's Kelvin. Okay, how do you switch from Celsius, which is usually what's given to Kelvin? You add 273. If at the end of the problem they want it back in Celsius, then you're just going to subtract 273 to get back. Okay, um, absolute zero is kind of something cool. It's this theoretical um, temperature that at 0k, nope, wrong thing, sorry guys, at 0 Kelvin, all of the particles stop moving. So remember, temperature is average kinetic energy, which is speed. So if I make um, the temperature or the particles move so slow that we are at 0 Kelvin, in theory, they stop moving. Okay, there's been some cool experiments. We've gotten pretty close. Actually, we've gotten past it in recent years, um, but that's more physics stuff. So if, if you have any nerdy questions about that, ask Charbella, not me. Okay, um, standard temperature, we already talked about standard pressure for STP, but standard temperature is 273 Kelvin. So if the problem is at standard temperature, we will use 273 Kelvin. All right, this says it's Charles Law, so volume one over temperature one equals volume two over temperature two is what we're gonna be working with. Let's make this bad boy not look like a word problem. So we have a balloon filled to a volume of 7.0 times 10 squared milliliters and temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Ah, we gotta put that guy in Kelvin. Do it right away so you don't forget. So 20 Celsius plus 273 gives me 293 Kelvin. That's what we're gonna use in our calculations. Um, the balloon is cooled at a constant pressure, so that means pressure is not part of this problem, to a temperature of one times 10 squared Kelvin. That's nice, they left that in Kelvin for us. What is the new volume? Okay, so let's predict our temperature. Basically here is going, let's move this decimal two spots because it's 10 squared. So we're going from 293 Kelvin to 100 Kelvin. So my temperature, why does it keep doing that? Oh, I keep tapping. Okay, temperature is going down. We know Charles Law is a direct re relationship, so slow the particles down. That will cause this balloon to go from a big size to a smaller size. That's why it's not good to take, for example, your, your birthday balloons out on a cold day. They get smaller, uh, make the little kids all sad. So let's plug this guy in to our um, Charles Law. So we're gonna take volume one. This is milliliters. It can be milliliters or liters. It will just match our new volume unit, okay? Um, so V1 over T1 equals what we're looking for, V2 over T2, 100 Kelvin. So to get V2 by itself, we have to multiply both sides by 100. That way those cancel, so we get our volume two. To crunch some numbers, I got 239 milliliters. Nice. All right, I would like you to try Avogadro's Law, and then check your answers back with me. All right, so I set up my Avogadro's Law. The volume's gonna increase as the number of mole, or the number of moles is going to increase if the volume increases. Um, so I set up, I solved for N2, which is number of moles. I got 0.89. That makes sense because I said that the number of moles was going to get bigger. Right here, I predicted that, and 0.89 is definitely bigger than 0.5. All right, you try the combined gas law, pause the video, and then check your answer with me. All right, here's my work and my answer. I just want to point out a couple of things um, as you kind of check. So notice, we're looking for pressure two here, and I wrote two relationships. I wanted to see how does the volume impact the pressure, and I also want to see how does the temperature impact the pressure. So the first one, the volume is getting smaller, and we know that makes the pressure get bigger. And then the second relationship, the temperature is getting way hotter, and that also makes pressure go up. Um, so in this problem, we would expect our pressure to actually grow like a, like doubly because it's getting impacted two ways towards the positive. Sometimes with combined gas law, you're going to get the opposite. One make, wants pressure to get bigger. One wants pressure to get smaller. So you, you get this kind of competing force. Um, sometimes they both want it to go smaller. So in this one, we had a way big pressure, as you can see in our final answer, compared to where we started at 710. Totally makes sense. All right, we are almost done. Um, if we are 
so if we're not looking at so much as a changing factor like p1 to p2 right the pressure is changing and we just want to figure out here's a situation what is volume pressure temperature something like that um, one of our options and it's just an option is to use mole island so we had mole island we learned how to go to mass island right using molar mass we learned how to go to molecules when we did Avogadro's number, right, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But there's also a way to go to volume, but there's one rule. You have to be at standard temperature and pressure to go to volume island. This bridge between Mole Island and Volume Island is up. No cars can travel along this bridge if we are not at STP. Okay, so in this particular problem, we are at STP because that's the whole point of this slide. Um, so if I have 2.3 moles, so we're starting at Mole Island, 2.3 moles, at STP, what volume do I have? So we're taking this blue arrow. We're, we know that at STP, 22.4 liters of a gas is one mole. So in our calculator, we're gonna take 2.3 times 22.4 divided by one, and that will allow the mole to cancel out, and we are left with an answer of 51.52. Let's do sig figs, two sig figs in our answer, 52 liters. What if we are not at standard temperature and pressure? So that mole island only works if we are at STP. Well, we can figure out other conditions using the ideal gas law, and you've seen this all year. Um, so P is the pressure, it has to be in atmospheres, V is the volume in liters, N is the number of moles, R is that gas constant, 0 0.08206, um, and we have a funky unit, that's so everything cancels, and temperature always in Kelvin. So we can plug in and find some missing pieces. So last problem here, I'd like you to try solving using the ideal gas law. Again, this is just a snapshot situation. We're not changing one thing. We're just taking a snapshot and trying to figure out how many moles are in the container. All right, so in this problem, I listed all of my variables, got those squared away. I plugged into Pivner and I was solving for moles because they actually wanted what mass. And I know I need moles in order to go from Mole Island to Mass Island. They do have two different gases, hydrogen and helium. So helium is just HE. Hydrogen is H2 because it's one of those seven diatomics. Um, so when it's by itself as a gas, it's just H2. Um, helium is not one of those diatomics, so HE is fine. Um, so I solved for moles. Um, I gave two sig figs because the temperature only had two sig figs in the problem. So that's the 1.1 times 10 to the third. And so I took moles of each of those and I should have H2. Oops, that's my highlighter, my bad. H2. Okay, um, so I took the molar masses of each. Um, and again, hydrogen, there's two of them. So the molar mass is 2.02. .02, and um, just did a mole island from moles to mass using that molar mass multiplied by grams um, and got my final answers. Hopefully, oh my gosh, I'm a hot mess, guys. Should have ended, should have ended right there. Okay, highlight, highlight, there we go. Um, so hopefully your answers match. Thanks for watching the video.